In this video, I'll go over how I beat World 1 of Super Mario 3D World from beginning to end completely blindfolded. Before we jump in, let me go over some of my most used movement options in the game. You got short jumps, full jumps, and ground pound jumps. The latter gives you the most vertical height. If I push Y just as I begin to ground pound, Luigi will do what I call a ground pound dash. If I push Y as Luigi is crouching, he'll dash forward just a little bit, but if I push Y after Luigi shakes his Italian coin collector, he'll dash even further. Lastly, there's the long jump, which you might recognize from Super Mario 64. Yep, it's in this game too, but it's nowhere near as broken. If you have any questions even after my explanation, leave a comment down below and I'll answer it there. Now that we got that out of the way, I'll explain how I beat World 1 without being able to see a thing, starting with 1-1. As soon as the level begins, I hold right to get Luigi against this fence. From here, I hold up until I hear the sound effect of this bush. From here, I do a ground pound dash, followed by a short crouch dash to put Luigi against this wall. The reason why I dash into the wall is so I can hear the sound effect of Luigi hitting his head to know exactly where I'm at. After collecting the cat bell by doing a couple more crouch dashes, I hold right after very briefly inputting down on the control stick. Holding right after collecting a cat bell will put Luigi just above the clear pipe. This is why I input down for such a short moment. Once I break this box, I know I need to jump over this gap. The sound effect of the Goomba spotting me is how I know I need to jump again. Before progressing further into the level, I make sure I'm standing at this corner right here. The reason for this is because it lines me up very nicely with this clear pipe. After removing any threats, I do a ground pound dash to get me really close to the pipe. After exiting the pipe, I do one more ground pound dash to enter this really long clear pipe. Once I land, I hold diagonal up and right. I know I'm hitting in the right direction when I hear the sound effect of the checkpoint. I also use the distorted course music to know that I'm in this body of water. When I hop out of the water, I wait until I hear the sound of Luigi sprinting to know when to turn right. When I collect this hidden one up, I know I'm in the right place. To easily grab the flagpole, I hit this fence here, climb the wall, and then do two long jumps to get Luigi in this exact spot. From here, I do one long crouch dash and one short crouch dash and grab the pole. Not too bad, right? 1-2 is even easier. When the level begins, I do one of these to get myself right up on the warp pipe. After exiting the pipe, I hold diagonal up and right to get to the clear pipe. Conveniently, the game forces Luigi to move right when he hits the wall, even though I'm not holding right. The moment I'm out of the pipe, I jump and hold right until I reach these blocks here. With this sound effect, I know it's time to hold down and then jump to the right. For this next part, I mostly just jump around until I hear the sound effect of the Goomba spotting me. Once I hear that, I jump over the clear pipe and into this pipe here. Again, I wait for the sound effect of the Goomba Tower spotting me before doing a ground pound dash. After exiting the pipe, I make my way over to the flagpole and that's it for this level. 1-A is simple. The moment I hear the level music play, I quickly sing to the letter K and then do a ground pound. This usually sets up both enemies to be right below me, but if I miss one, I keep doing ground pounds until I win and hope I don't take damage in the process. 1-3 was tricky. Aside from Bowser's Castle, which I'll get to later, this level took the most time to find a path and memorize. So first, I do a long crouch dash from this platform and then I briefly go left while crouching to put Luigi about right here. Once I hear Luigi sprinting, I do two long jumps. From here, I do a couple of ground pound dashes to end up here. When Luigi reaches the top of a wall, he makes this sound effect. Doing this six times will put Luigi on this cloud. To measure how much time has passed, I swipe at nothing four times then jump off of the cloud. Now it's very important that I line myself up as much as I can with this line right here. To guarantee this, I jump on the grass, crouch dash into the wall, do a short crouch dash back towards the center, and then crawl to the right for about half a second. Since Luigi makes a sound effect every single time he crouches, I slowly walk back towards the line until I hear Luigi make a sound. From here, I do a ground pound into a ground pound dash, do a full jump into another ground pound dash, and then do a short crouch dash. This sets up the spacing just right, so as soon as I hear Luigi sprint, I can do a long jump and bounce off of this piranha plant. I use the sound of Luigi sprinting to know when it's time to stop and crawl. When I hear the giant piranha plant make its chomping noise, I do a crouch jump into a ground pound to easily take it out. And then from here, I just mosey on over to the flagpole. One dash four is a simple and to be honest with you, boring level to complete blindfolded. I spend most of the level holding diagonal up and left to make sure I get into this cave and even more importantly, this cave. I know I'm in the cave when I hear Luigi collecting the coin ring. 
To clear these gaps, I need to jump the second I hear the sound effect of the dash panels. If I jump too early, I fall into the void. If I jump too late, I end up not jumping at all, and I fall into the void. If everything goes well, I just have to hold up on the control stick until Luigi hops off of this cool aquatic creature. Now I have to figure out which side of the warp pipe I'm on. Luckily, there's a bush on either side of the warp pipe which acts as an excellent indicator to tell me which side I'm on. Once I figure out which side I'm on, I put myself in this corner and then jump to the warp pipe. Since there's no enemies, it's easy to grab the flagpole. And now on to Bowser's castle. After hitting the soccer ball bomb, I wait to hear the sound of it exploding before jumping and ground pound dashing into the wall. I then do a long crouch dash to the right, run while holding down, and then sprint to the right. Depending on when I jump and dive, I'll either climb the wall to safety or clear the gap entirely. I have a setup for both, but since I climbed the wall in this video, I'll explain this setup. I do one of these and let go of the L trigger so Luigi doesn't slide, and then I do another one while holding the L trigger so Luigi does slide. This lines me up to easily get past the pair Thwomps. After confirming that I'm in this corner, I do a ground pound jump while slightly holding right so I land on top of this wall. From here, I do a long crouch dash followed by two short crouch dashes. This gets me out of the way of that Goomba tower in the near distance. After hearing Luigi sprint, I do a long jump followed by a full jump. After hearing the Goombas spot me, I quickly count to 20 and then squash them. I crouch dash downward to hit the railing to confirm where I am. From here I swipe while slowly moving towards the Goomba tower so I can eliminate them while not taking damage myself. This is important for the setup that will get me past these bombs over here. So to make it to the boss fight, I make sure I'm against this ledge, barely jump onto it, do a short crouch dash, and then jump and dive the moment I hear Luigi sprint. When I get on top of these blocks, I crouch dash again to confirm where I am, which I do by hitting this railing. From here, I do a long crouch dash to the right to line myself up with the warp box. The Bowser fight is honestly pretty easy. Bowser grunts each time he throws a bomb, so the instant I hear that sound, I leap forward. After his sixth hit, he spits out two fireballs and then throws another bomb. After his seventh hit, I force him to jump over this ledge so he'll throw the eighth and final bomb. Once Bowser is defeated, I enter the warp box and hold right until I bonk this wall. Conveniently, this wall perfectly lines up with the flagpole, and that's it. I just recently figured out how to record in 60 frames per second, so at this point I would typically recommend the video where I beat World 1 without all the commentary, but I don't think I will because the video is so choppy. I'll put a link to it in the video description if you really want to watch it, and if you do, I recommend you watch it on your cell phone because the choppiness is so much easier to handle on the small screen. Again, feel free to ask your questions in the comments. Please like and subscribe, and thank you so much for watching.